it's a beast. Oh, ho, ho, yes. Uh. to test out tonight it's an absolute tip in here but we've got to get the camera off of the back of the esprit on its cushion in it on its case there and the raspberry pi and the usb we can st soon strap that on the top uh, because it looks like out of the blue after the arrival of said scope we might be able to do a couple of test shots and have a look at its collimation and just see where our starting point is with it all basically this little journey of reflection of light and stuff we've never used before let's see if we can get it first of all fitted on our mount well guys i won't lie i'm dipping my toes into a chart territory with this and now I need the counterweight extension tube. She's a big girl. Well guys, we may just fucking well get an image out of this tonight. It's been hard craft. I don't know what I was thinking. Just take the image train off one scope, pop it on the other. There's plenty of adapters on the back of there. It'll fit. Well, guys, that was proper hard. I suppose a good thing was it was a quick dash. We strapped on a USB hub, strapped on two cameras and connected the mount. Just banged the laptop outside, sat there freezing me nuts off. Just really to kind of just see an image come down through the new scope and uh, oh, that was cold. That was cold work. And using the, so the, the, the mount isn't polar aligned. It's off a good few degrees from star party. I've just banged it onto the pier and uh, eyeballed her in. And that's it so i wasn't planning on doing long exposure stuff just wanted to see if i could adjust collimation but then of course it dawned on me after fiddling with some of the collimation knobs as i'm even though my mount's tracking even the tracking's off so at 1300 millimeter focal length you know every couple of seconds a star is moving what you know 40 50 pixels maybe not as much as that but it's constantly just drifting in the frame so if it's doing that then focusing on a star and defocusing isn't necessarily going to give me um an accurate feedback uh, especially on exposure lengths that i was doing of sort of two three seconds long to try and make that donut nice and clear. Anyway, that was hard graft, but, oh, and I tell you what, that's a big heavy, oh, big heavy hold getting it off that mount. It's just a bit of an awkward height, because it's quite high up when you've got a 10 inch bucket to <laughs> shove up there, and I reckon that's about 
18, 19 kilos with the camera and bits on the back of it. And when it's sort of at high chest height, trying to hold it in position whilst you're doing up your, your clamp on your mount to keep it fixed in, it's a little bit blooming. It's a little bit hair raising, but uh, it was a good first test. See how the focus draw tube works. I'm really impressed with with that QHY268 on there, which isn't a tiny camera, but it, I know it's not the heaviest, but it's handled that and the guide camera all right. Um, and I'm not as familiar as you guys out there with Nina, uh, but because I've got that on the laptop and it saved me trying to find somewhere for the Raspberry Pi to be strapped to the telescope because it's a big round bucket and not a great deal until I make some sort of proper decent brackets for the top rail. I've basically got to just not rush this and just um, get the rig set up properly. As you've seen, I thought I could just take it off the back of the Esprit because there's loads of ad adaptions um, on the actual back of the uh, sharp star you know i thought oh it's going to be m48 m54 or m60 whatever the other setting is there's three four different settings on the back of the sharp star so i presumed are uh, the the oag and the filter draw which everything's tied to will go bang straight on there wasn't quite as simple as that, but um, that's for another day. Uh, more testing, more rig designing and lead management work to be done. Uh, I'll keep you guys up to date. Follow along, click the subscribe. I'm really looking forward to honing this, uh, this light cone in to really be as efficient and, and as intense down to my sensor as I can possibly get it. So I'm going to look at a cat's eye collimator to eyeball that end in. Then eventually, eventually, I can start doing some um, sensor tilt um, analysis and um, you know run the aberration analysis. You can get spherical aberration that people don't realise they've got because it's perfectly spherical. You, you look at it and go perfect round stars but you've still got aberration so you've got there's a good few things you've got to check off so follow along let's get this f5 long focal length beast of a light bucket from sharp star really honed in get some absolute cracking results from it <laughs> and uh, we've um, got the scope out there again after playing with a bit of uh, collimation detail we put a collimation cap in and I did some to in and fro in to in and fro in until I was absolutely sure it was as much as I could do in the daytime studying the the patterns of the mirrors through the cap changing the light intensity to, to show off different parts of the 
um, primary and secondary mirrors to see them, try and see them as clear as possible through the collimation cap, making the adjustments and it seems to have been a lot better than my first attempt on night one just doing uh, a collimation with an out of focus star tonight after the collimation cap the out of focus stars looked better right across the field whereas before the donuts were uneven and they were but they weren't a, a straight pattern all the way across the the, the frame uh, the donut was the same but it was turning as as you looked round the frame so oh, something was well out of whack there but we after the collimation cap is great so we've got up and up and running uh, we had to focus the guide camera we've got that in focus I've been dithering about excuse the pun on um, the guiding settings because at 1200 millimeter focal length and yeah that seemed quite tricky I've binned it 4x4 four four to actually pick up more stars in my off-axis guider and I've had to actually come away from the default guider settings uh, in K-Stars I've had to up the amount, the maximum amount of movement that the corrections could make. So I think by default it's 25 arc seconds of movement, if that makes any sense, in a, in a correction pulse. I've virtually doubled it. And even then I got RA axis was running away. It'd be great for about three minutes and then it'd just run away, creep away, creep away off the graph without being able to get corrected back. So I've just actually turned on for the first time, I've seen in the new version of K-Stars, there's an RA guider type add-on that tries to sort of predict any sort of pattern. So I was, I was kind of thinking, if there's a runaway pattern in RA, will it suss it out? will it hold on to the guiding for longer than just a couple of minutes before running off um, please 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 yes and we've still got this is the first um, frame that's come in this is the first light live here folks at Wayne's Cave that's looking good okay what are we on it's holding the guide stars a lot better now and in fits viewer this is the first four minute frame of m101 i'll explain why in a second why why we're going for m101 but this after four minutes that's looking that's looking all right you know that's better than all right that's Come on, move over. Let me have a look at you. Yeah, that's that's. Let me see if you can see this. Look. Oh, let me work out the geometry of this screen. I don't know. This is it's always crap when you do this. I know, but I don't know how much of that you're gonna make out. But that's one of the better frames. Of, of the test ones and this, that one saved. This is the first light I've actually saved down onto onto the hard drive. Uh, you could see number one in, in the top left. That's the first one. And that looks, but that looks pretty good guys. I'm chuffed with that. Let's have a look at uh, the guiding staying with us. Now, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be one of these that says, "Oh, I'm getting 0.3 total RMS." But yeah, it says total RMS 0.38. Look, but I'm binning four by four um, to really pull out the guide stars in the off-axis guider. It made a huge difference from bin two by two, and uh, 
while it's just holding our frame steady and looking at that four minute frame it's done a good job because even a three minute test frame i'd done earlier while guidance was on without those tweaks to the guiding parameters it, i had that dreaded double star look that slight double star when you get that little bit of drift off but that's looking good if we can keep this this is all ad hoc i've just trying to vlog some of this what because you know what it's like you do problem solving you're tweaking and you you're testing and then afterwards you you, f you struggle to remember the path you took and the path could help others you know and this is sort of the first time with a reflection scope here in the cave it's it's a bit of a beast with a 10 inch mirror as a primary and we've got a secondary and then it comes back onto the correcting glass into the camera and uh that's all at f5 so at, so we've got 1200 millimeters at f5 so nice quick light gathering and reasonable amount of reach with 1200 mil um so for this type of thing on m101 is a hell of a test and m101 the details in it just on that one frame is awesome let's uh i'm gonna just zoom in now and have I know on one frame these things are impossible to tell, but I'm just shooting away on M101 because there was a post put up earlier today. Here in the UK, somebody had, had shouted up, look, it's going to be reasonably good weather for astronomy, even though it's nearly the middle of our, it's nearly constant twilight here. But there's reports about a supernova that's just starting in somewhere in and around m101 so it'd be awesome and apparently it should uh, achieve a brighter level than 13 magnitude so apparently this was this scope resolves at 13.8 so if it's getting brighter from here on out over the next few days let's see we'll we'll click away tonight just get what we can look through the good frames obviously filter them out and um and then see what comes the next coming couple of nights this isn't going to be a fancy uh lovely choreographed advert because i just want to get on with this astronomy and i'll report back to you guys hope you're all doing well hope your scopes are all out there nice and cold and absorbing yourself some photons Speak to you soon.